Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for bringing us all together this evening. Father, we want to ask that you please bless everybody um, that is in Interfaith Wealth Builders and all of our listeners, Lord Jesus. We ask for a special blessing for them as well. Lord, we lift, we want to lift everyone up to you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for the opportunity to praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the word, Lord Jesus. We thank you for um, just keeping us safe, Lord Jesus. And um, we want to ask that you please help us to retain anything that we're, we're learning tonight, Lord. And um, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we just want to welcome our listeners and those that are joining us um, all over the world. And we're going to be studying on Cain and Abel. And I just thank you, God, that we decrease, that you would increase, and that the wisdom of your word would come with accuracy and understanding, and that the Holy Spirit would come with thorough um, knowledge of your word. And we thank you for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we thank you, Lord God, as we turn this here word over to you and you begin to minister to um, Interfaith Wealth Builders and all of your people that are listening all over the world. Amen. And so Cain and Abel in Chapter 4 of Genesis, um, I want to establish some some groundwork because I was thinking about sacrifices um, earlier this week and God came to me. I know, you know, the Holy Spirit was saying, what is it about sacrifices with Cain and Abel? And it's not just that it was this week, but it was last week. So I didn't study it uh, when I was told to or when it came to me. And so I was brought back to it like Monday evening. And so in Chapter 4 of Genesis, um, it says, um, let's see. At verse 2, I'll begin, oh, yeah, verse 2 later, she gave birth to his brother Abel, um, which is um, um, Eve. Eve gave birth to two sons. The first one was Cain, and the second one was Abel. And so it says, now Abel kept flocks. And flocks are... Um, a understanding of sheep. So we find that Abel was actually a sheep herder. He kept flocks. And in um, our understanding further, flock has to do with the congregation. So we find ourselves understanding a little bit more where there's symbolic understanding of symbolic words in the Bible. And it says Cain worked the soil. So Cain worked the soil, which means that he was tilling the land. And, you know, when I was looking at it, I'm sure many people have studied it, but what I found is for myself um, the sacrifice and what made the sacrifice different. Um, Number one, Abel was working with flock. And these here are connotative to um, the church. Um, It is God's people. It is God's sheep that he was working with. And Cain worked the soil. And if we remember when we go back that Cain and Abel's mother and father were kicked out and they were um, cursed because of the actions that happened in the garden. And so um, God had said in that time that Adam and Eve, that he would, they would work by the sweat of their brow, you know, Adam. And so here it is, Cain is working the soil. And we have you know, different ways we can look at the soil because in order for us to sow seed, we have to plant them spiritually. So um, we don't want to get away from people planting, but we want to understand what was the difference in the brothers giving and their sacrifice. So we're going to read on. It says, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, but Abel brought fat portions. Um, from some of the firstborn of his flock. So he was bringing um, abundance. He was bringing flock with abundance. And that you could look at also and say that, oh, if I went out into the um, streets and I'm ministering and I'm working the harvest in the fields for God, what happened is is that he's bringing in the abundant um, sacrifices, the abundant offering, because we do know that when we work as wise men. He said wise men in Proverbs, they save souls. 
And so here, when we look at all of that and we begin to wrap our minds around it and bring it together, what we find is is that there was still a gleaming of the sacrifice because, you know, Cain brought fruit. And it's not that God didn't like it, but his, his brother is talking about some stuff that's going on in Matthew where we become disciples. He's working the flock, and he's doing some business saving souls is what's happening here. So the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So let's find out a little bit more about Cain because the, the scriptures tell us why the sacrifices and the offering were so different. And we can look at ourselves and say, when we go and make a sacrifice, who is it for? And is it doing anything to build up the kingdom? All right. So Cain was very angry. Okay, this is here right now. You can write it down. He was angry, and his face was downcast. This is all about flesh. All right. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? So God is speaking to him, you know. If you do what is right, God said to him, will you not be accepted? So he was jealous. So you got another another issue going on here. This is not the fruit of the spirit. You got anger and now you got jealousy, right? He says to him, if you do what is right, uh, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. And when I read that, I was like, whoa. I was like, whoa. You see, because we get angry and we don't even know that we open the door to sin. It's knocking at your door. Every time you decide to get an attitude about something, sin is knocking. And all you got to do is just stay there so that you get in a conflict and you open the door and let it in. Amen? And here it is, is jealousy with the brothers because, you know, Abel is bringing in an offering that was favorable. And it was uh, fat. It was abundant. Um, they, whatever he brought, it was of fatness and abundance. And, again, we think on people that are out in the fields that are working the harvest as God has. Um, and then you come in with somebody that's been lost out in the street, and they got all these valuable goods in them, and they was just waiting for somebody to minister or witness to them. And they bring them in, and, and, and then God is saying, well done, my good and faithful servant, because you don't know how great this diamond in the rough has been. I've been looking for a soldier like you to bring him in. So then his brother gets upset because, you know, he's getting recognition from God. But God wants to you know, com- continuously push him to uh, continue the work out there because that's what his purpose is. That's what we're here for, right? So here it says, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. And mastery is the key because in Galatians, I refer to it many times. When we go into um, the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 and 19, first we look at the fleshly issues that man deals with, man and woman. And in order for us to come into Christ consciousness, um, we have to do some work, which means that following the directions of God when he's telling them, you you, you got to master this because sin is crouching at your door. You don't even know that the devil is knocking. And because you're so caught up in looking at your brother and his favorable sacrifice you just giving what you want to give because you really don't care and you just doing what you want to do because you really don't care and your anger and your jealousy is making your offering look like it's nothing first of all god does not dwell with that kind of business you know what i'm saying He's talking to them because in that day and time they could hear from god he was giving clear direction amen But the issues that really made his sacrifice unwarranted or not so great was because of his attitude. All right. And and, and if I'm wrong, you you guys see something, correct me. So it says, now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. See, sin took its place and had its way. And how many times does God ask us to follow him and not ourselves? And this is here another deciphering of understanding because of the boys. Their difference in the sacrifice is is that Abel was following God. 
How do we know? Because he had a fat offering that was favorable, them key words. The other thing is, is that when we apply it to the church and his favor, uh, the, the portion was fat, it's about abundance. God is always wanting for us to bring in abundance so that we can receive even more abundance, right? And this is in giving. This is in making your sacrifice and giving. Whatever you're doing, uh, we're not doing it with a heavy heart. We're not doing it with an attitude, oh, there they go, asking again. Oh, God, God don't need all of that. You know how people talk about that. Okay, here we are again. We're thinking about these things and why Abel was so favored. And it was because of his attitude. Now, his brother kills him. So sin has had his way. So his brother did not follow again what God is saying. He's not even in the walk with God. He's not following God because if God tells you to master yourself so that sin won't catch you, are you going to hear him? Now, let's just keep that and let's think about it. That's a provoking kind of thought because all of us have been in a place and we're all learning, but when will we allow ourselves to totally hear what God is saying, to totally be sold out and follow God, to totally work the harvest for God? When will we put ourselves in that position and stop making excuses like Abel, I mean like Cain? Cain was angry because his brother had a better sacrifice. He was jealous. Why? He felt insignificant. But if he had gotten that attitude together and put away those foolish thoughts, concerning his brother, then mastery would have been his portion. He would have looked at love and joy and happiness, you know, peace. He would have looked at long suffering. He would have looked at how I can turn my sacrifice around. But it's not the outward sacrifice. It's the inner sacrifice. How do we give from the inside? It makes a difference when you have anger and jealousy crouching at your door to take someone out because of their sacrifice or because of what they're doing. How many times do you go to work and people are jealous or you've been jealous of somebody at work? How many times have you been jealous about your husband and your children? How many times have you been jealous about somebody driving a different car when you could get it for yourself? All you had to do was sit there with God. All you had to do was just follow what God is saying. All you had to do was just Go out there and work the harvest because the best kind of giving is saving souls. Proverbs says it. Wise men. So wisdom is the portion that will get you the blessing and the breakthrough when you follow the order of God because God is a wise God. And he gives us the fruit of the spirit as we develop and let go of foolish and confounding things like anger and jealousy. Because to stay in a place of anger or jealousy, if it's adultery, if it's um, fornication, if it's uh, rage and fits, uh, if it's um, thievery, you're stealing, it, to stay in that place is only, it's only going to open the door again to sin. Dope dealers, it's only going to open the door to sin. And these things lead to death because that's why they call it sin. Anything that is out of the order of God, anger, bitterness, jealousy, envy, and strife, this is it. If you don't master it, if you're a dope dealer, if you're smoking dope, if you can't find your spiritual continuity within you and hear from God, then God bless your soul because what's happening, sin is having its way. If someone is molesting a child, sin is having its way in you, and it's just a byproduct of continuous repetitious um, cycles. Until you come to the place where you see that mastery is necessary. Because we weren't made to violate one, of, one another. We were not created to violate one another. We were created to live in harmony. No matter what's going on around the world, we were not created for discord. We were not created to blame one another. Although this is the system that we live off of, we were not created to be victims. We were created to be whole beings when we find our place and come back to our first love. Okay, so let's read a little bit longer, uh, further. It says, I, then the Lord said in 4 and 9 of Genesis um, to, to Cain, where's your brother Abel? He says, I don't know, he replied. He's lying. Here he is. he got a lying spirit now. 
Am I my brother's keeper? So this dude has got all of this stuff, but he's giving a sacrifice. You know, can you feel what I'm saying? He's giving a sacrifice to God, and he wants to be jealous of his brother because the sacrifice is not favorable. But, but, but he got all this stuff inside of him he needs to let go of. He needs to master his within self. He needs to master the darkness within him and let the light come in. All right? So the Lord said, what have you done? And he says, listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you're under a curse. I'm cursing you. And, and you're driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield this crop for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. How about that? This is more than I can bear. But you did not want to hear God telling you to master your, your thoughts, master your emotions. You just wanted to continue in the sin until that sin mastered you and allowed you, told you to kill your brother. How many times is it happening? And death, it happens so many ways because it happens with the mouth. And, again, it happens with molestation. It happens with drug dealing. It happens with people taking drugs. Oh, I'm not judging. I'm telling what's true. Because sin is something that comes to separate you, number one, from your truth. From your blessing. So how can you give a blessing when you're living in sin? How can you give a right sacrifice when sin is at your door and you're opening it up? You a molester? You've hurt somebody like that? Somebody's hurt you like that? Then the best thing that you can do is come to Jesus. And Romans 9, and, no, Romans 10 and 9 through 10, it tells us that there's nothing too hard for God. Because even here, Cain says, that my punishment is too much, I cannot bear it. Today you're driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, check this out, not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one, was, no one who found him would kill him. Now, check this out. That means that, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've lived as Cain. Amen? Every one of us uh, have fallen short of the glory of God, but it was always a second chance that God gave us. He gave us a second, third, and four hundredth and millionth chance. The thing about it is not using the, the premise of the chances to continue in the sin, but to find where you are right now and make that change. So I make the appeal of Romans uh, 10, 9 and 9. Uh, through 10, that if you confess Jesus Christ, that he is Lord and Savior over your life, then your life will be changed. And anybody that repeats that and even goes to the Bible and reads it right now, it's a done deal. He seals you up right there, and your life begins to change. And sometimes you don't see the difference, but it's a wonder. And it's happening because it happened to me. It happened to these young people that's on this Bible study, and it will continue if you follow the word. So then what you do is get in your Bible, and you find a Bible-believing, teaching church that gives you foundation. And your sacrifice will make a difference at that point. But anybody that's giving and sacrifice, and it's on the level of Cain, ask yourself why. The breakthrough hasn't come. Now, as you're listening to us, this is Interfaith Wealth Builders, and there is the word for you to make that change. Uh, our number, you can reach us at um, our website, www.kimwarner.com, and we want to thank God for Portrait Innovations who have donated to our food drive and the others that are coming. We have others, but I'm getting ready to run out of time. Portrait Innovations, oh, by low over on Owen Street here in Las Vegas. They've uh, donated. We want to thank God for them and the many more that's coming in. And if you want to be a part of the donation drive for, um, ho for the holidays, for Thanksgiving, we have a turkey drive giveaway coming up, and that's going to be on the 24th. But to make donations, go to the website, www.kimwarner.com. And we want to thank you guys for listening. Have a wonderful evening, and stay blessed in the Lord. Be encouraged and tune in again. Amen. Thank you. God bless.